Hello, my Facebook friends. I'm coming to you a little bit early tonight. I have a dinner date with my son later this evening. So I wanted to go ahead and get, um, get our time together finished before he came over so we could have some quality time studying God's Word together tonight. I hope everybody's having a great Thursday. We have one more day, people. We can do it. But I was reminded this morning when I posted on my Facebook page how excited I was for Friday and why couldn't today be Friday. And a um, fellow Facebooker reminded me that tomorrow is Friday the 13th and a full moon. So the school kids are going to be cray cray tomorrow. So maybe I don't want it to be Friday, but I think I do. We can handle it. All right, back to business. What I want to talk to you about today is our fourth scripture study tidbit. We've talked about how important it is to actually write out scripture. That was our first tip. Our second tip was to make connections to the scripture as we read to make it relevant to us. The third tip yesterday was to visualize and to actually put ourselves in the place and into the action that was taking place in the scripture or in the verse. Today we're going to move forward and we're going to talk about questioning. The big Q. It's pretty funny, but when I was thinking about what I was going to talk to you guys, well, I knew I was going to talk about questioning, but I was kind of getting my thoughts together this morning about how I was going to um, kind of explain the importance of it. I was scrolling through Facebook and I saw this funny picture. It was on my friend Vanessa's Facebook page. Vanessa, if you're watching, I was stalking you. I wasn't stalking you, Vanessa. It just popped up. But... Vanessa is a fellow teacher and a picture popped up on her Facebook page and it was this picture of this woman and her hair was going crazy and it said um the average four-year-old asks 437 questions per day so kindergarten teachers need to be paid more that's what it said okay so when I thought about that and it made me smile because it's perfect for what we're discussing tonight. Think about this. We are like four-year-old children, people, to our Heavenly Father. That is, not to each other, hopefully. But we are God's children. Just as a four-year-old is experiencing life and new things and is trying to make sense of the world around him or her and is questioning and is asking and is mimicking and is trying new things that's us spiritually we're spiritually little children god wants us to ask questions i know that sometimes as a as a as a um teacher and sometimes as a parent i would get a little bit frustrated when you know they would the children would keep asking the same questions or I thought that they were kind of silly questions or whatever. God doesn't feel that way. God wants us to come to him as children. He loves that we want to know more about him. He's ready and willing and able to help us discover him. Before I talk about actually how to question, I want to read you a scripture. And I know we've heard this scripture before. It's the scripture in Matthew that talks about how Jesus wants us to come to him just as little children. And I know that normally when we hear this scripture, we think about the innocence of a child, which that's important. Today, I want us to think about the questioning minds of children and how they're always so eager to figure things out. And they're always so excited and they always want to know more. I think that's the heart that God is wanting us to have. The more we question and the more we seek, the more he's going to give us answers and the closer he's going to draw us into him. Okay, here's the verse in Matthew. Matthew 18 verse 2. He called a little child, he called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, truly, I tell you, 
Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. When I read that again today, I thought about children. How are children different from adults? Well, they're different in many ways, but in a few ways that I think are critical to this verse and critical to our lesson or our tidbit for today, children are excited to learn. Children aren't afraid to ask. Even if what we would consider a question to be silly, what children don't view it that way. They truly want to know and they will truly ask you. They will not even hesitate. Another thing about children, they're dependent on their parents to teach them. Our Heavenly Father is our parent. We need to be as children and be dependent on Him to teach us. Human children or our children look to us to show them, okay, what's the proper way to respond in certain situations? What's the proper way to control my emotions? What's the proper way to show love? Um, how, how do I act in this situation? What does this mean? What does that mean? That's what the, our Heavenly Father wants to show us. But it's, uh, it's up to us to ask the right questions and to be willing to listen. So that's what I want to talk about today, questioning. If you were doing our study, the New Beginning Study from Bible Stories from the Heart, there are actually discussion questions with each lesson. That's great. That's a good starting point. But I want you to get used to asking questions yourself. Don't just depend on um, the questions that I posted on the Facebook page or the questions that someone else may ask. Let the Holy Spirit guide you to seek Him and His face even deeper. All right, some questions that I think are great, just general questions that I like to always ask when I'm reading scripture. I like to always ask, where is the love in this verse? I know that God is love, and I know that the Bible is a book of love. I don't want to miss the love. So whatever scripture I'm reading, whatever verse I'm reading, I ask to, for God to show me the love and I search for the love and I continue to search for the love. Another thing that I like to do and that I think is important, ask and figure out who is speaking in the scripture. Who is speaking? Who are they speaking to? And what's the context of the verse? To answer these questions, a lot of times you'll have to go back and read the entire chapter. You may even have to go back a couple of chapters to read to find the context. But it's important to know who is being spoken to and who's doing the speaking. Then I like to ask myself, okay, what was this person, what was the intention of this verse? Did they, was Jesus trying to show them love? Was he trying to teach them something? And did they learn it? Why or why not? And what am I going to learn from this verse? How is it going to change me? Because like I've said every evening when we've studied together, if scripture doesn't change us and doesn't fill us with God's love, it's simply an empty exercise. It's simply words on page. All right, I want to show you, and I posted a picture because I know it's going to look backwards, but I write all over my pages whenever I read and study. As I'm reading the Bible verse, whether it be in the workbook or in the one that I wrote in my journal, I'm going to write questions as I have them. This is something that I learned in education. It's something that we teach the students. It's a comprehension strategy to help them dive into text and to make sure that they are understanding what they read. Well, as adults, when we read, we need to do the same thing, especially something as important as the Word of God. So I actually write the questions. I'm going to give you some examples of some of the questions that I wrote. Okay, let's just read the scripture together. Starting off, John 8, 1 through 11. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. 
Okay, I started off and I asked a question about the word but. Because the word but is in the middle of a sentence normally. Okay, this happened, but then this happened. So in my mind, I'm wondering, okay, what's happened before this that makes the first word of this verse be the word but? So that made me wonder, and it made me do some Googling and some searching, and it made me dive deeper into actually what was happening in this verse. As I read back, I realized that Jesus is, this is the first time that Jesus is coming out publicly to speak to a large crowd. And it's going to happen at the, um, the Feast of the Tabernacles. This was an annual celebration or thanks, time of Thanksgiving for the Jewish people. They would meet together for a week, either in September, October, somewhere around there. And they would actually have a time of Thanksgiving where they would remember all the times that God had rescued them, you know, from their slavery in Egypt and through the wilderness. And it was just a time of remembrance and Thanksgiving. So I thought this was very powerful that this is the first time that Jesus chose to come out publicly and minister. Okay, they were celebrating God rescuing them. And here's their Savior coming to speak to them for the first time. I just think it's beautiful. And I don't know if I would have noticed that if I wouldn't have gone back because of the word but. So there's that. Small word huge revelation from that word. Okay, I'm not going to read you all of my questions, but some of the other ones, when it said, um, and he sat down, that made me wonder, because when I go to church, my pastor stands up. So it made me wonder, was this something that was common practice in the day? So I googled, and let me tell you, Google is going to be your best friend. Be careful on what sites you go to. And I listed some of my favorite sites on the Facebook page. Be careful the sites that you go to, but you're gonna find some great information if you stick to some of the, the really relevant sites. What I found was back in this era, they didn't have Bibles like we have today. They didn't have printed books. They had them rolled up on scrolls. You know, the, the Torah was rolled up on scrolls and the Ten Commandments and all this. Well, the teachers and the preachers would stand to read the Torah, because it was a long scroll and they would, you know, hold it up and they would wouldn't want it to touch the ground. Then they would roll it back up and they would sit down to teach because normally they would be teaching for a long time. Another reason why they sat down, this gave the crowd, this gave them an understanding of, okay, when I'm standing up, I'm actually reading to you God's word. When I'm sitting down, I'm sharing with you my thoughts. So it kind of helped them kind of differentiate the two. I thought that was interesting. And I also loved just picturing Jesus sitting amongst them and teaching them. I thought it was so beautiful. So that's just a few of the questions that I asked and answered as I went along. You're going to have many questions that you ask and answer. Not all of the questions are going to get answered. And that's really not the point. It's okay to ask questions and not find the answer. You know, I know we're probably all wondering, where's the man in this scenario? This is the, this is the story about the woman who was caught in adultery, and she's brought in front of Jesus, and they were wanting to stone her to death, but there's no mention of the man. So I know all of us are wondering, where's that man? We're not going to know the answer. And it's okay. Does it impact my relationship with Jesus to not know what happened to the man? No. So it's fine. Another question that we're not going to have answered is what Jesus was writing in the sand. When you ask questions, you can ask Jesus to reveal things to you and the Holy Spirit to reveal things to you. You may not know the exact answer, but he's going to fill you with a feeling or with some kind of revelation about his love through that. When I was asking him earlier when I was reading this, you know, Jesus, what were you writing in the sand? He didn't tell me, of course, but he kind of gave me the feeling that no matter what he was writing in the sand, it represented love. I know some people think, you know, maybe he was writing down all of the sins of the other people, and he may have been, but in my mind, 
And I think Jesus speaks to each one of us individually based on what we need. And he knows that I need his love. He knows that that's my quest and that I want him to fill me with my love, with his love. So when I asked him the question, I just had the overwhelming feeling that he maybe was just writing down everything that the Heavenly Father had ever done for them to show them love. You know, in my mind, um, the verse, Jesus did not come to condemn. So, you know, in my mind, he's not writing out the sins. In my mind, he's sharing the love. And we'll never know. But, um, but the point is that I was questioning and asking Jesus as I was reading. That's the whole thing. Jesus wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to interact with you. He wants you to seek him. Oh, there's another scripture that I wanted to read you guys. Okay, thinking about seeking God. And how do we seek God? How do we seek a deeper relationship with someone? We ask questions. We wonder about them. We care about them. We really want to know about everything they experience, everything they do. Okay, so it reminded me of this verse. This is in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. I love those who love me. And those who seek me, find me. How do we seek Jesus? How do we seek God? It's more than just opening our Bible and looking at words. We have to question. We have to be willing to go deeper and to look and to ask and to search. He's a treasure. He's a treasure that is waiting to be opened. It's up to us to unopen that treasure. He's willing and able. So I would love to see what you discover. I would love to know your questions. I would love to know what Jesus reveals to you. If you're not a member of our Facebook page, it's Bible Stories from the Heart. I would love for you to join and share your, share your thoughts and your questions with us. Um, hopefully I helped you a little bit. A couple of my favorite websites, and I put them on our Facebook group page. There's a website called TorahClass.com. I love TorahClass.com. It gives a lot of Jewish history. And since I want a deeper relationship with Jesus, I want to know what it was like when he was on earth. What did he experience? What were the customs? What was the, um, what did the area look like? You know, what, what, where did he sleep? What did he wear? So TorahClass.com or Torah.com is very important. And you can go on there and you can actually search a word. Like you can just put in the word scribe and it'll pop up with all different types of lessons and things where you can really dive deep and see what, you know, how the scribes reacted to Jesus and, you know, different stories and customs about them. So it's very interesting. Another website that I love is a website and I put it on my Facebook group page. It's where you can actually look the original wording of the Bible. Our Bible has been translated so many different times that I like to go back to the original words and I and each one, it'll show you what it looks like and then you can click on it and it'll give you the exact definition and references and different verses that use that same exact verse so you can kind of compare them. Um, I love to see what it means in the original wording because a lot of times, when it gets translated, it is easier to understand, but sometimes it loses a little bit of that rich flavor of the original meaning. So those are just some tidbits for today. I hope I helped you. Um, please share with me what all you're learning. I learned so much from you guys. Bring your heart, your child's heart to God tonight and ask him some questions. Good luck out there, people. I won't be doing any more Facebook Live videos this week. I plan on doing maybe one next week. I have a fun art activity that I want to show you guys. So I'll be back next week. But post your questions and thoughts on Facebook. See you soon. Bye out there.